Lenses is a huge thing to consider when purchasing any camera body. So if you're on the fence deciding to purchase the Lumix full frame versus the micro four third frame system, this video might be helpful for you. Now, one of the go-to lenses that most videographers and photographers are using is the 24 to 70. Now, this lens is extremely versatile to shoot any wide range of product videos, lifestyle videos, and anything in between. Now, I'll be comparing the Lumix full frame 24 to 70 f 2.8 versus the micro four third frame equivalent, which is the 12 to 35 mil f 2.8 lens. Even though these lenses are both made by Lumix, they offer very shocking results in the comparison between the two of these lenses. The Lumix full frame 24 to 70 is gonna be costing around $1,700 brand new. While the micro four third 12 to 35 mil is gonna be costing around $900 brand new. Now there is some alternative options you can purchase that is equivalent to these lenses. Nextly is gonna be weight. Now this is a huge thing to consider. If you are a travel photographer, travel videographer, or you are on your camera for hours on to end, a micro forward third camera could potentially make sense. So the weight for the full frame lens comes out to be 2.06 pounds, which doesn't sound like a lot. You know, two pounds, you know, curling two pounds is easy, but holding a two pound lens plus your camera and if it's rigged up, holding that type of rig being about five to 10 pounds all day long can be extremely taxing on your body. And then on the flip side, the micro four third 12 to 35 mil lens is only 0.675 pounds. So it's an extremely huge difference. The full frame lens is weighing about 1.5 pounds more than the micro four third lens. Size is the second thing to consider in this category as well, because if you need a lot of stuff and you're trying to pack a bunch of extra equipment, maybe you want some more drones, other lenses like that, full frame lenses tend to take a lot more space because of the sensor size. So the full frame lens is gonna be coming around 5.5 inches. This is not fully extended out. This is just how it can fit into your kit versus the micro four third camera is gonna be 2.9 inches. So basically the full frame will be double the size and take up double the amount of room in your camera backpack. Which if you need more space and when you want to fit more stuff into your camera gear, a micro four third camera might make more sense. For the filter thread on both of these lenses, the full frame is coming around 82 millimeters, which just means you need a much bigger filter, which does cost more money purchasing a bigger filter but the micro four third one is only 58 millimeters. Now it might already seem that like there's a ton of advantages for the micro four third camera. And here is one more, the minimum focal distance. On the full frame lens, it's gonna be 1.2 feet away from the lens that you can focus up to the lens. Meanwhile, the micro four third is only gonna be 5.9 inches away from the lens. So if you need to shoot any macro photography, or product photography and you can have only one lens that's extremely versatile and do lots of things, then the micro four third lens can shoot a little bit closer to products. Now let's talk about a couple of features between these two lenses. On the micro four third lens, there is actually an optical image stabilization, which you can turn on and off. What is really nice and handy about this lens is that there is actually stabilization built into this lens. Now, Lumix cameras have really, really good stabilization built into their cameras as is. But if you need that extra stabilization, so if you pair this with like the G9 Mark II, you can get some really, really stunning image stabilization with this lens. Meanwhile, there is no stabilization on the full frame version of this lens. So micro four third cameras tends to have a lot better stabilization as is, since it has eight stops in the G9 Mark II for stabilization versus the full frame, I believe only has five stops. Now on the full frame lens, there is no switches or dials, but you can actually pull back this little part right here and go into manual focus mode, which is really cool if you wanna have really accurate focus pulls and you're able to see better. Just the physical fact that it is a bigger lens will make it a lot easier to pull focus. Now let's talk about bokeh and depth of field. So starting off with the depth of field, whatever your focal length is, it's gonna be basically two times whatever that is in full frame terms. So for example, if you're shooting on the 12 mil, 
focal length, it's gonna be looking like a 24 mil in comparison to full frame. So now let's talk about bokeh and depth of field. So basically on a Micro Four Third camera, the bokeh and depth of field is gonna be looking like two times what it actually is. So if you're shooting on an f2.8 at a 12 mil, it's gonna be looking like an f5.6 for the bokeh in the background, just the blur in the background, and at a 24 mil. With that said though, it does have the light of the f2.8 still. So what's really cool about this, if you are filming any macro photography, you could be shooting on an f2, your bokeh is gonna look like an f4, but you still get the light of the F2, which has some unique advantages, especially in the macro and product world. I tend to use Micro Four Third cameras whenever I'm shooting tiny products, just because I need a lot more light coming into the sensor, but I don't need the depth of field that comes with it. With that said though, this could be a disadvantage also when you are comparing this to the full frame lens and you want more bokeh. Because if you pit both these cameras side by side and you shoot at the 12 mil and the 24 mil on the equivalent of these two cameras, your bokeh is going to look like a 5.6 on the Micro Four Third camera versus it's going to be looking like the actual 2.8 on the full frame camera. So in summary for this little section, on a Micro Four Third camera, your bokeh and depth of field will be two times the size so your 12 mil will become a 24 mil and your f 2.8 will look like an f 5.6 for the bokeh but it will have the light as an f 2.8 still so again this is an advantage for product photography but if you need to do lifestyle or you're shooting weddings you're not going to get as creamy of a bokeh and as a blurry of a bokeh as comparison to a full frame line. Now I'm gonna do a little autofocus comparison test between these two cameras. Now I am gonna be shooting on the S52X and the G9 Mark II. Both these cameras have face detect autofocus, so it should be a pretty even test. And I'm gonna also be color grading these the exact same color and use the exact same settings for both of these. So here is the test. Now, if you're on the fence purchasing the Lumix S52X versus the G9 Mark II, I have an entire video going over that right here. And then YouTube recommends you might like this video right here. Until next week, guys, peace.